Alright, so you've heard about Tesla, electric cars, electric motorcycles, electric planes, electric jets, electric everything. It feels like electric vehicles are really starting to take over the world. And for good reason. They're really high powered and they're pretty easy to recharge. Battery technology has gotten way better in the last 10 years. Now, you may have heard of electric bikes and you might want one. So you have two options. You can buy one or you can build one. Buying one is going to set you back at least $1,000, upwards of $3,000. Building one, my way, closer to $400, maybe $500. So I'm going to show you exactly how I did it and teach you a few things you need to know. So first of all, you're going to need three main components, a battery, a bicycle, and the motor. So all of my parts were ordered off eBay. I ended up around $400, so I had a $120 bicycle. $90 worth of batteries, and a $150 hub motor kit. So this kit is rated for 1,000 watts at 48 volts, and it should give me to a speed of around 35 miles per hour using the throttle. The battery I found was actually built by someone. It was just a few older used packs that he had put together himself. So he was only selling a lithium battery for $90. Now, I kind of taped this together, wired it into one pack, which is 12 amp hours. Amp hours is the size of the battery. For one of these bikes, you want at least 10 amp hours, maybe a little more. Now, if you can't find one that's used or that someone built for a cheap price, lithium batteries go up to $300, some are around 200 that you can buy on eBay already pre-built. Those are the easiest route and lithium lasts the longest. The next route is to buy lead acid batteries, just like car batteries. They're a lot heavier, but they do the job. So that's another great option. They're also cheap, $80 to $90. You typically get four 12-volt batteries and wire them in series to create a 48-volt battery. So the hub motor I'm using goes in the rear wheel. Rear wheel. A throttle has a throttle, of course, and a controller, which controls the motor, the throttle, the wiring, etc. It comes with two new brake handles that cut off the motor and allow you to recharge the battery when going downhill. Okay, I'm going to show you how I built mine. I used my bike I got off eBay, the hub motor kit, and the battery again, and put them all together and it ended up being a really neat build. So I hope you enjoy it. Alright you guys, so it's been about 20 minutes and I just finished assembling the bike. The kit actually came with some Allen keys and tools. I'm really thankful for that because it made putting this together easy. We're just moving into this house and I don't have any tools. But everything's tightened down, it feels really solid. So we'll go ahead and try to fit the battery in the frame. All right, so it actually ended up being a perfect fit. I was a little worried because the frame looked a little small and the bag is pretty small too, but it ended up just fitting in there perfectly. It's all Velcroed and strapped in. I have my little XT60 connector right here we'll use for charging. The next step is to get the kit and put it on the rear wheel. All right, fast forward to January 8th, so it's the next day. I'm afraid it's still really dark in here. I only have one light, but we still have our bike and we just got our electric bike motor package. So I'm gonna go ahead and unpack this. I'll set up a couple more lights and we'll put the wheel in the frame and wire some things up. So, I've taken out all the parts. We have our hub motor wheel here. It comes with a tire and a tube all set to go. I was going to swap out this tire for the one that's currently on the bike. However, this one has a little bit more tread. It seems like it'll last longer. I think I'm just gonna keep this on this wheel. I'll have two different tires, but this should last longer. And then I have a backup tire once it wears out. Next, we have a little bag for the controller. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure where I'll put the controller yet, but we'll find a spot for it eventually. Also, we have a manual, which I will not be reading. Some zip ties and what are these wire covers. This is the controller. Now, a lot of people think these are cheap Chinese pieces of garbage. However, they do the job really great. They're reliable. They don't blow up. As long as you use them as they're meant to be used and don't add extra current, etc., they work great. 
We have our phase wires coming from the motor. So there's three main wires here that will connect to the controller. Everything was already pre-connected in the box, so you know what goes where, but everything is also color-coded. So we have this sensor here, which is designed to go around the pedals. I'm afraid I won't be using that, but what this allows is a pedal assist. So the motor will assist you when you're pedaling. So it doesn't have to be just a motor only configuration. You can also set it up to assist you when you're pedaling and give you an extra boost. Next, we have a couple of brake pedals. Like I said, they cut off the electric motor current so that it slows down your bike a little faster. You don't want the motor going at the same time that you're braking, that just wastes power. It also comes with a couple extra grips, a large wire connector, and your throttle. Now these throttles come differently. Some are thumb throttles, some are twist throttles, and some are like this half twist throttle, which you just use like your thumb and your forefinger for. That should work just fine for this. So let's go ahead and put the wheel in the bike, start wiring things up, and we'll see where we get. So I've removed the rear wheel off the bike. Very simple process. I hope you can do that on your own. And I just wanted to make a quick note. Now, this bike has disc brakes on both wheels, right? So you can actually take the disc brake rotor off of the original wheel and put it right onto your hub motor. They made a spot. And these wheels are actually the same size. So it should fit back perfectly in the bike with disc braking on the rear wheel. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap it over. It's only six bolts and we'll see how it fits. All right, so I've done a few more things. We added the motor, of course, and tightened the nut down on each side. So it's nice and tight, it shouldn't be going anywhere. We flip the bike back around and now I want to talk about the grips. So you're going to need to take the grips and the original brake handles off and replace them with the electronic brake handles. So we've done that already. I swapped the cables and put the grips back on. So on the left side, you'll be using your original grip. On the right side, we'll be adding the throttle. So you'll have this throttle and your power button to turn on and off the bike. And of course, your other brake handle. Next, you want to be able to cut the original grip just using like a razor blade to about half width, at least for this one, because this is just a thumb and index finger throttle. So you might need to do that for your throttle, depending on the kit you get. The kit I'm going to link in the description has that half throttle. We also have stuffed the controller in the frame. So we kind of stuffed this in front of the bag. The battery is only about yay long, so it's gonna sit there comfortably. And then we're going to zip tie this, com this controller in place. I was going to put it on the bottom of the frame, but I didn't want it to be in the way of these cables for the shifters. So I think stuffing it in there doesn't look too bad. And it should be nice and clean and out of the way. So next, we're going to be wiring everything up. We will add an XT60 connector to controller to be able to get power from the battery. We will connect all the color-coded wires, including the phase motor controller wires, to the controller, and we'll see where we get. Real quickly, I want to show you guys the hardest part of the wiring, which is still very easy. This is how you wire the motor to the controller. Now, there are three main cables, a green, a yellow, and a blue. And these also come from the motor. They're a bit smaller. All you're going to do here is put these cables on these little threaded pieces. Make sure they line up with the color um, for each of them. So you're gonna have basically each wire on the same threaded piece. Like so. And we'll have all three here when we're done. And then you tighten down each nut and I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like. All right, so again, very simple. It's just a three wire connector, really. Make sure all the colors match, tighten down the nuts. Then you're gonna have a cover that will go over everything that you'll tighten with two screws. And then you can hide away this yellow piece of plastic somewhere on your bike. So I ended up rerouting the motor cables to the very inside of the bag, right next to the battery, since there's a little space, a little bit of empty space here. And it's just a wider spot and a little neater for that big connector. So we should be able to zip this all up and just have the one cable running to the rear wheel 
and it shouldn't be too much of a mess. Next, we will find a way to connect the power to the red and black wires on the controller and get a few more accessories wired up. So now it's just a matter of getting all the wires in place and packed away nicely because, I mean, look at these things. This is the throttle cable and it's like, it's about six feet long and so are the brake cables. I don't understand why they did that, but we're gonna pack away those cables using this little hole I cut in the bag. We're gonna put those in the side pouch, wrap all the excess cable up and then connect it to the controller. Bigger isn't always better, we just have to fix this. All right, so now that our cables are all connected and everything's tucked away neatly, we can actually connect the battery to the controller and start to test things. So I have everything mostly wired up and we'll just have to tape away, zip tie everything, make it neat, and that'll be a process in the future, I guess. But let's go ahead and start connecting the power cable. So your controller has a red and black cable, of course, and your battery hopefully has a red and black cable. Now, to connect the two, you're gonna to need to assemble your own connectors. Now, you can buy connectors. These are often for kind of like RC planes and such. And often, like the ones I'm using, XT60s, they don't come with wires connected to them. You have to solder them on yourself. But this is a solder-free build. So what I did is order a harness, which I'll put a link to in the description, that already had, I believe this is 12 gauge wire soldered on. So it's very thick wire and all you have to do is cut the wire, strip the ends, and wire everything together. So let me go ahead and connect this and we'll see how it goes. Alright, so I have the wires all twisted up. And we're gonna have a little moment of truth now. I'm going to connect this to the battery without shocking myself, and we'll see if this thing runs. Now the problem with building something with parts you buy off the internet is that not everything arrives at the same time. So I'm still missing my charger, which really sucks, but hopefully there's just enough juice in the battery to see if this thing even runs. And of course it says it's empty, but will it still run? All right, first test. Let's see if this thing even works. And we have power. So it does work. The problem is the battery's dead and I don't have my charger. Now, I'll have to wait a couple days to get my charger, but for you, it should be instant, thanks to the magic of YouTube. All right, you guys, so quick fast forward to the morning. It is now daylight and I've just received my charger in the mail. So this came with like an XLR connector, which I guess could have been nice, but again, I'm using my own XT60 connectors. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut off this connector and wire it to my XT60 uh, piece of the harness that I ordered. And then we'll try to charge this guy up. All right, so my homemade battery is interesting. I've never charged it before. I just built it and I hope that it's gonna charge correctly, but for now, I'm going to leave it for maybe about an hour, maybe two, and we'll see if this light changes from green to red. Right now it's kind of a little of both. We'll see what happens, we'll see if it charges up the bike, and I'll come back in just a minute. Alright you guys, so after a few issues, like the battery not charging right, I've finally put together the bike. I've also added a LED headlight. It is 14 Cree LEDs, and it's ridiculously bright. I'll have to link that in the description. We now have a fully functioning electric bike. And I even added a disc brake to the rear wheel. So we have both wheels of stock and power now. So let's go for a ride. 